everybody. Today, an art journal tutorial. This looks really complicated, but it's really easy. What we're doing is we're going to make a mask from the stencil to lay, get this layered sand dollar look. Let's start. So I'm working in my 9x12 Canson Mixed Media art journal. I've taken it off the coils, taped off the edges, the, the coil edge, and uh, gesso the page. I gesso the page so that the colors blend more easily on the page. Now what I'm doing here is I am using all the colors of the rainbow and blending them on the page with a makeup sponge and I'm just kind of doing a block and blend. I want different areas of color on this background. Now, typically when I've done sand dollar, I go with the blues and the greens and the ocean colors. And I wanted to do something different. I've had this idea in my head for a while, and today was the day to just throw caution to the wind and give it a try. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? So I've used quinacridone, magenta, and orange, and I blend those together. I've used yellow green and turquoise, and I'm blending those. And where they overlap, you get some of that, it looks blue, dark purple. And I'm not too worried about hard edges here or it being so exactly perfect because I know I'm going to do some stenciling and stamping on top of this. I also am planning at this time to cover the entire page with the sand dollar stencil. But as you know, as the page unfolds, sometimes you change your plan. If you want to block off an area on here, you can put gesso down, let it dry, and then you can put the acrylic paint on top. So once that is dry, and I am drying in between stages, I just don't think that it's necessary to show you that. I'm using this microbial stencil from the Crafters Workshop. This is the six inch one. It's these dots. And I just want to have some pattern behind. I just, and I didn't want to use black because I thought that was going to be too stark because again, my idea is to stencil those sand dollars on top. And I was okay with some pattern showing through. I just didn't want it to overtake and conflict with the sand dollar. I'm kind of putting this in so it looks like sea bubbles in my head. That's where I'm going. And then I grabbed my script stamp and put the same Prussian blue acrylic paint on it and stamp in other areas. I just want small scale pattern down. This breaks up the rough edges that might you might have or the imperfections. And when the sand dollars are on, some of that peeks through. And definitely some gets pushed back and you don't really see it. But mixed media is all about those layers. So once I'm done stamping, I'm pretty much done the background here. Talk about simple. One stencil, one stamp, four colors, couple makeup sponges, and away we go. Now these colors, especially with that green in there, that yellow green, and the mixing with the orange, they really come to life and some of them look very neon. Now this stencil is called Sea Creatures and I love this sand dollar one. I also love the starfish. This has an open space and my idea at the beginning is to, I'm using white gesso and stenciling it on. And I don't want it to be completely opaque that was my idea at the beginning. I do change my mind as I go based on what I'm getting. Now, I cut out a mask by just stenciling on some copy paper and cutting out the sand dollar shape. And I'll be using those to give this layered effect of these sand dollars. 
which if you've actually seen a sand dollar bed, they do layer like that in the ground. However, when they're alive, they are brown in color, not this beautiful white. Now, the one thing I'm not doing here, which I, if I do this again on a canvas, which is my plan, this was my trial on a art journal page to experiment and figure some things out before I went on canvas, I will turn the stencil because I pretty much have the stencil, the sand dollar stencil facing the same way all the time. And I could have flipped it upside down to get a reverse pattern and just, or turned it a little bit more to give a little bit more variation to my piece. But right now I am really happy. Even though I changed my mind about the opaqueness of the sand dollars, I'm really happy with what's evolving in front. The colors are bright and they're, there's popping. I'm getting that layered effect. And I could have left it as this was. And I'm going to experiment with this. I have the six inch stencil of the Sea Creatures one as well as the 12. And I am going to be playing with this some more. I have a few more ideas. So they may not end up being videos. So if you want to check them out, follow me on Instagram at Creative Katie. Also, I'm just going to take a minute right now while you're watching me layer this sand dollar stencil. If you aren't being notified of my videos, you may want to click the bell, click to not get the notifications and reset it to get the notification. There's been some problems on YouTube lately, so you may want to check your settings and reset it. And if you haven't done that, you might want to think about it because that way you will get an email or a pop-up message just saying that there's a new video. You'll see a thumbnail and you can decide if it's something that you want to watch and you won't miss any of my videos. So I come back. I decide now that I want it to be a little more opaque. So I'm very carefully putting back the stencil and I'm using white acrylic paint. It's Liquitex Basics brand. I just find it's more opaque than just gesso. It's also thicker so there's less likelihood of it seeping under the stencil. So I'm coming and you can see some of the ones that I've put the white acrylic paint and you can see the difference. You can mix and match. I didn't care if all of them were the same level of opacity. I like that variation. Now, this background and everything on this page right now, there is no physical texture. So, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm making visual texture by layering these stencils. Now, I'm going to shade around the edge of the page, and I start off with Payne's Gray, which is a blue gray, and I switch to black for the edge of the page just to get a little more contrast, but I do use the Payne's Gray to shade the sand dollars. And when I'm shading on the sand dollars, I am building, making it look 3D. I'm creating visual texture and layers. I'm using an angle brush and I'm using the floating acrylic technique. I have a video where I teach that technique. It is a great one to use for shading, for highlighting, and I use that pretty much on every page. And I like using it because it uses acrylic paint, which is permanent. I don't have to worry that I might reactivate it at a later stage. And you can see how 
instantly by shading around the sand dollars, they're, they're popping off the page. And that's what I mean by creating vis visual texture or layers. And I chose the Payne's Gray because it's not as harsh as the black. So this takes a little bit of time and I come back and I might add more. And I definitely did not video all of that because it's not exactly interesting for you to see, but I do want you to see how it changes and really makes the page. And I turn the page constantly to make it easier for me. So once that's dry, I am taking some gold paint. This is Liquitex Basics. I thin it down and, and I keep this in a container and I use my fan brush to splatter gold all over. Let's just add some sparkle and makes this lovely page even more special. Everything's better with gold. Now I went to my Ocean Commotion sentiment pack and I picked out two sentiments, not all stars belong in the sky. And I chose that one and I blew it up actually 150%. All my sentiments, you can change, you can shrink them down, you can blow them up to make bigger so they fit your pages. You can go and purchase those at Ninny's Napkins. There will be a link in the description box. You can go there and flip through and see how many sentiments, what the sentiments are, and decide if it's for you. The other one I had was uh, not not all treasure is silver and gold, which I thought, I thought would go with the sand dollar too. I'm taking my Secura Glaze black pen and making the black of the words stand out a little bit more. It's glossy, it's dimensional, and it's a really dark black. And I wanted the sentiment to stand out a little bit more. I talked about doing this maybe on a canvas. When I do that, I will print the sentiment out onto tissue paper, which will go opaque or go translucent around it. Now I wanted to make this star part of the sand dollar really stand out because of my quote. So I grab my Posca pen and I'm just filling this in, making this more opaque than what I got from the stenciling. It's a little thing, but it add it so much to the page. This video is under 14 minutes. This page probably took me under an hour to do. even with all the shading that I did, because it's relatively simple, it, but it looks complex. And you can do the same layering using a mask for any stencil, if you're using it as a focal image. So we're coming to the end of the page. I hope you love this page as much as I do. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Subscribe to my channel if you're not a subscriber already. And until next time, go get creative.